Okay, today I'm going to show how to make a bowl in Blender. First we're going to delete the default cube and then we're going to shift A and create a mesh. We're going to use a UV sphere. It'll give us a nice spherical shape. We're going to open this little doohickey down here and this lets us choose the segments, the rings, and the radius. I think for radius for a bowl we'll probably only want, you know, 0.25 of a meter. Um, should be good. Something small but still probably kind of big compared to a person. That's great. I'm going to click one on the numpad and it goes into front orthographic view. Press G and Z and bring that up just a little bit. That's perfect. Shift A I want to show and put in armature for reference just to see how big this is going to end up. I'll select that again. Tab to go into edit mode. B to box select and I think I just want to select the top half or so right of this. I'm going to do X and we're going to delete those vertices. Actually I want to do this with the wireframe that's Z and then wireframe select top half and delete those vertices. That gets them all gone on both sides. Right, hit one again. I think I actually want to delete this row as well. All right, and that makes a nice little bowl shape. Tab to go back into object mode, Z to go back to solid view, right? And now we have a bowl that looks like this. That's probably roughly the right size. So we'll hide the meta rig there on the right. For this bowl, we want to make it so it has some thickness, right? But first, I think we want to make it so that way the bottom of it is not rounded, but we want it to be flat. So again, for that, I think I'm going to select that. I want to go back to wireframe just so I can see better. G and then Z, move it up just a little bit to that. B to box select. Select that bottom row, G and then Z. Move it up like that. That way it's not too rounded on the bottom. Tab back to object mode. And we're going to save this as a bowl. All right, uh, Z solid, perfect. We have a bowl looking thing. It is still extremely thin, has no thickness. We're gonna go over here to the right to the little wrench icon, modifier properties, hit add modifier. And I believe we want solidify, right? We can change the thickness here if we like. Honestly, this thickness looks fine to me. Change the offset if we like. I think it looks perfectly fine to me still. So. That's great. All right, I'm gonna go ahead. I think this looks good to me. Uh, I'll apply it. Once I apply it, it will be permanent. I can't undo it. So I'm gonna hit apply because I'm fine with this. All right, that looks good. Perfect. Maybe the only thing I'll hit two, you know, tab to edit mode, hit two, just do edge select, uh, hold alt and select that edge loop and hold shift and select that edge loops. Now I have both edge loops. Do control B to bevel. Pull my mouse away a little bit and that lets me give just a little hair of a, a bevel on that just to make it a little bit rounded there. Right? Tab back into object mode. Great. Now we have a rounded edge on our bowl. You won't cut yourself when you're trying to drink from it. Got a relatively flat bottom. The bowl won't, you know, slide around everywhere. This is great. You know, control S save. Go to the shading tab at the top. All right, one thing I want to do is I want to shade this smooth. So I can either right click and hit shade smooth. I can do F3 and type shade smooth. Um, or also if I have that set to my quick favorites, you know, by right click, add to quick favorites, right? And then I can hit Q and I'll have shade smooth. I already had that there for some reason, All right? Shade smooth, perfect. Bowl is smooth. Wonderful. New material. Full. And we'll do a blue stripe. Full blue stripe. We'll do that for the color just to add some interest, right? It'll be a, a white ceramic bowl. In order to do that, I think we're going to grab a texture. Um, wave texture, right? Control and shift and click. Gives us this. I want this to be in the Z direction to have horizontal bands that can give me the stripe, right? 
I can adjust the scale however I like. So I will likely adjust the scale maybe 0.25, right? That looks interesting, right? You know, but that's not quite there. Maybe do 0.5. That kind of gives you a middle one there, um, but it does make the bottom be um, like that. If I do Control T on this with my uh, Node Wrangler, I should be able to change actually the location of the texture, right? So I can click this around, and that lets me adjust that, right? And as you can see there, I've got it. So it's you know maybe do a 0.75 or something there, right? And that puts the band relatively in the middle, and that puts the, you know, none of the dark colors at the top or at the bottom so much. We will shift a converter color ramp, put a color ramp in, right? And we'll probably bring in that up, and that makes it much darker there, and we'll bring this down a little bit just to crisp up the edge of that band on the bowl. Bands on the inside and outside, that seems fine and acceptable to me. Great. Select this whole bit, G, move it over, more space, shift A, color, mix RGB, and we'll plug this into the factor and this will let us change the color. So on one side we want one color. All right, so this will be the stripe, and so we'll change that to be a nice blue kind of color. Maybe something like that, and this will be simply white. Right, perfect. There'll be blue on the bottom. That should be fine. All right, looks like there's even a little bit of a rim of blue at the top. That should be fine as well. Uh, if anything, you can change the scale just a hair smaller, I think, right? 0.4. Right, 0.5 is that, 0.45, it's hard to get lined up properly, but this, this should be fine, right? That can plug into the base color. All right, now then, let's talk about roughness. We'll do a texture, a noise texture, control shift and click on that, and we'll see what that looks like. For this one, I'm going to do two textures, actually. One is going to be a higher frequency texture, like that, and the other I'll have be a lesser frequency color texture, like that. That should be good. I don't need that. So that was actually, if you have a thing hooked up to the wrong thing, you hold shift and right click to draw. And that lets you do that, that creates a node there, and I hit X and that deletes that node. And that's a good quick way to get rid of those connections you don't want. Shift A, and I think we're gonna do a mix RGB, and we're gonna plug this into here and this into there. You see how that looks. That's not quite what I want. I think I'll plug this one into here. Right. Yeah, that seems roughly okay. Switch those around. I, of course, color ramp. Uh, Shift D to duplicate that color ramp and drop it on that. Bring these over bring this one over. I'm actually going to make this big. I'm going to hold my mouse over this window. I'm going to do a control and space bar. And that lets me just focus on just the nodes without having to see everything else right now. And that'll let me do a little bit of tweaking here. Right. Um, which I expect I'll have to do anyway. So then we'll tweak those and that will let me see that. Do a control and spacebar again and that should let us see what is going on here with these. Um, right. Which 
adjust them as needed. Alright. That seems okay. We're going to plug this one into the roughness. Just like that. Control shift on that. Give it a moment. And now you can see there's roughness on that. So it's a little bit, you know, smooth and a little bit not. Uh, I think we actually want to add another color ramp on this. And that'll just let me bump this up, right? Just a hair. And we can plug that into the roughness now instead. All right. Actually, want to bring that and that up. Well, no, that's fine. Go back to this. Right now, it's mostly shiny, but you can see there is some variation there. Right, and I'll maybe bring this down just a little bit more. Right, as I can move that, you can see it's different. So, stick it there for now. Perfect. All right, and that's kind of a nice little bowl with blue. Now, what we can also do is we can hit new and now create a copy via this button, right? And we can make a copy and we'll call this one, you know, maybe a different color stripe, right? We could do a red stripe, not a reed stripe, but a red stripe. And we, all we have to do is change this one color to be whatever we want, right? And then there we have it. We have a nice bowl with a red stripe. Away we go. All right. Now I think let's go ahead and see about baking this out, right? Because we could bake this out and then we could see it in Godot or some other tool. To do that, we need to add a image texture. Go to texture, image texture from the shift A, hit new. It's just a small bowl, 1024 by 1024 should be fine. You could probably actually, I'll, I'll give this a try at 512, right? That's the next power of two smaller than the bowl. Uh, we'll call it bowl red stripe diffuse, All right? That seems good, hit okay. Perfect. We're gonna go over here, change this to cycles, go to the bake drop down and expand that. Bake type is diffuse. Deselect direct and indirect. Go over here to the image viewer editor and click on the bowl red stripe diffuse. Have this selected, have that selected. Only direct or only color, not direct and indirect. Bake that. And we'll see what we get. Actually no that won't work. I will cancel that because we have to unwrap. So I'm going to, yeah, because see, right now if I select this and I go to the UV editor, you can see that all the UVs are like that, which honestly, that's kind of useful. I feel like we could bake, take advantage of that, right? What if we baked all of these to the same texture? We could do red, or, you know, red there and blue there. Let me do that. Um, although you'd have to change your UVs. So it's just a little bit less than ideal. And also we can't have difference on the in and outside. So I'm gonna go ahead, you know, select A, U, Smart UV Project, two clicks on the right side of the island margin and hit okay. That does this, it looks weird as heck, but it works, trust me. I like that, bake it. Perfect. Over here on the left, we have the different size, you know, the different maps all in the right place. You know, there's fairly wide margin. That's great. That lets us, you know, have no issues when we go and put it into an engine or anything. There won't be any weird behavior on the seams. It's great. Okay, we'll save this, right? Image, save as. Bull red stripe diffuse, save as image. Next up, we want to do bowl, and I'm just going to call it bowl stripe 
roughness. We can use the same roughness map for both red and blue. Hit OK. That's great. That's selected. This is now on the roughness as well. So roughness, roughness, change this to roughness, bake that. Perfect, it's already back, right? And that gives us the roughness map down here. We can save this now. Let me go back to actually the image editor because that makes way more sense. Save as, uh, cancel, or well, I guess that works, save as, right? Yeah, sure, save as. So that's saved. All right, we did the red, we did this one, the roughness. We don't have any other maps to bake. Let's go ahead and do full stripe blue. Uh, diffuse, same size, hit OK. Actually, I'm gonna change this to bold blue stripe and then that means I have to add the texture here, right? Full stripe blue diffuse, blue stripe, whatever, stripe blue. Go over here back to the diffuse and make sure things are checked correctly without direct or indirect on. This is selected. This will go and look at the blue diffuse and we will hit bake. And that's perfect. I'll control S and tab that out of object mode actually. Go over here and hit image and save as and full stripe blue diffuse save as image. Perfect. All right, now that we have those images, I'm gonna show how to set them up in Blender to view. So I'm gonna make a new with the images image material. And I'm gonna go and just kind of nuke all that and nuke that. And I'm gonna shift A, add image texture and we're gonna go ahead and choose the bull stripe blue diffuse. That can go into the base color and another image texture. Bull stripe roughness can go into the roughness, right? And look at that, that's using the baked textures and not the procedural textures. That's great, that's perfect. So if you wanted to do this in Godot, you just go up here, export it as a OBJ or GLTF, and then bring in your textures and away you go.